Dear Reaper fam, I was long gone, but I'm back. I've been busy. Lucky for me, I've been busy. Uh, today is going to be more or less kind of a short video so you can take more advantage of your computer. Despite Reaper being a very CPU friendly software, it's never too bad to try and figure out how you can take more advantage of your CPU. So with that in mind, straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and let's just jump into it. Okay, so let's suppose for a moment that you have some sort of project where you have, I don't know, something like drums. And of course you will have your kick, your snare, your overhead left, your overhead right, and your bass, something like that. In the end, the only thing that you should be thinking about that should matter in the end is that you have to think of how many moves you have to do. In, in audio, everything is some sort of exchange, of exchange where you have to choose how much are you willing to give in exchange for what. In the case of digital or in-the-box processing, how much are you willing to give to every single instrument or every single part of your production or your mix? Because everything is being handled by one single CPU of how many cores you have, you know? So you could have... EQs on every single one of these tracks to clear the low end because people have told you that this is a bad idea and you should always clean your low end like that, right? And you could have a ton of high pass filters uh, all stacking up, but maybe that's not necessary because in the end, in audio, what you are doing or, or what we are doing is only adding or subtracting frequencies or amplitudes at any given time. Instead of spending four plugins here, for just lowering and controlling how much low end you have here, you might want to just add one single EQ at the top of your folder because this is where you actually need it. For example, I do this a lot with background vocals where I'm not trying to EQ every single one that looks more like this, you know? I have some sort of auxiliary track where I'm stacking vocals that could be high, mid, or low. And I could have some sort of main auxiliary track where I have some sort of main backgrounds that usually are unisons or octaves. And with this in mind, what I use this main EQ for is precisely to do only some sort of adjustment so my background vocals fit or stand out inside of my mix, right? But other than that, I'm only playing around with the microphone that I'm using and the faders that I have inside my DAW. I'm not using anything else. Instead of thinking that it's a good idea to add some sort of plugin like this that's kind of heavy on the CPU on all of these tracks, what I will end up doing is trying to figure out that if I have some sort of sterile preamp because I have a home studio audio interface, I'd rather get them all together processed at the top of the folder or at some sort of auxiliary that's processing all of them. And maybe in the order of my processing, I could go EQ first, then I could go saturation, and then maybe I could do again some EQ if necessary, or I could just use saturation and one single EQ that's proper for any given situation, you know? But the whole idea is try to take advantage of using your processing more at summing points, especially when there are many tracks that are your that you are only pushing into your mix instead of having one specific EQ for every single one. Second point for your CPU processing is don't lean too much on your third-party plugins. I know they look nice. I know some have very specific features. So if, if you need something that's really unique, like uh, Limit 1 by Leapwing, because it's a very specific kind of limiter, it's probably hard to get that tone specifically without using limit one. But again, the, the advice stands on itself. So spend where you need to spend. There's a video at John's uh, Toucan's YouTube channel where I show so many ways to play around with the distressor and you can get some really interesting sounds with this. Mm -hmm. 
like some things you can get around with it because you can combine very specific plugins that are stock or, th or that are free that you really know how to play around with. And you can just try to get a very specific tone out of it, then EQ it so it fits whatever you're looking for. And of course you can do a ton of tricks and complex chains using these stock plugins, where I could just take something out before compressing and then putting it back. and like just play around with it. Remember to save any chain that you're building because you like the way it sounds by just opening the FX bay. I don't know how this is called. And you can just go up here and say FX and save FX chain or right click and save FX chain or command or control S. A lot of stock plugins, I know some people hate that I say reapp pack plugins are stock, but anything that's built some way into your DAW that doesn't need a third party to run is simply really CPU friendly. Remember that you can also find out which tracks are giving you some sort of performance issues, looking into the view menu and the performance meter, and you can see how much they are taking. I like to see the core usage because this is the one I like because then I know how many cores I'm using because I know how many cores my computer has and I know how I'm building up or making my computer work, uh, if I'm making it work way too hard or less than hard. And with that same thing in mind, what you can do or what you can start learning how to do is, for example, if you're doing a lot of parallel processing with something like that, with some sort of processing like this, if you have some really heavy plugins, in this case, I have the Distortion Tube Culture by Arturia, Again, the limit one by Leapwing and the Invigorate by Newfangled. I'm just going to name all of my tracks using the action rename selected tracks as first effects. And now everything's named. I'm just going to set some random color to them. And since most of these could be some sort of parallel processing, eventually these do end up using a lot of your CPU, especially when you're sending a lot of tracks into one single track. I would end up only using freeze tracks to stereo render pre-fader, so I always have my fader free, I save and remove items, items, and I will get this render window and I will have these items set. And I know these ones are frozen because the items are immediately locked. And if I ever need to go back and do some sort of small adjustment, I can just right click and on freeze tracks. And as you can see, I will have my track available again. Rendering, because this is not completely rendering, like it is, but it isn't. I'm freezing the track so I have this audio at hand, so I don't have to move it anymore. I'm committing to that decision. You wouldn't believe how many of my mixing sessions have a lot of bosses on auxiliary tracks, like just committed with freeze tracks, so I can always go back if something has gone really wrong in any way. And that lets me save a lot, a lot, a lot of my CPU processing. Once I'm kind of done with drums and I feel safe enough with most of my processing, always commit or render reverbs because those can be really heavy, especially convolutions reverbs like this that are super big. And this is well enough, but once you start getting heavy on the processing of reverbs and you start doing some intense routing, uh, your CPU will be grateful that you will be rendering this kind of stuff. So again, you just look into the action list and freeze tracks to stereo render pre-fader 
And if you run into some sort of issue like this where you are clipping, uh, internally inside Reaper, you won't be able to clip, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, do be careful with your levels because gain staging is something to learn. It's useful. It's really, really useful. And last but not least, uh, let's suppose for a moment that you have some sort of heavier or more dense production where you are actually using more tracks than I have shown, right? So you start funneling down your mix or your production process into a couple of buses. You have to choose. You have to choose which elements need the most work or could benefit more from a lot of work. So sometimes my vocals have a ton of processing in, in them because I have a lot of available return tracks, a lot of effects available, a lot of processing that could be parallel or in series. And usually my vocal bus is quite heavy on my CPU. My drums is kind of heavy because it's something that I always like to really treat properly, but I end up relieving the work on it by freezing my tracks. But if you have some sort of small mallet sound in the back, that's only like, don't waste your CPU on that. If needed, add some sort of filtering, if needed. Not every single channel needs a compressor, not every single channel needs saturation, not every single channel needs something. Sometimes the only thing that you need for processing is fader, I promise. The sooner you start working with less manipulation of the sound because you got it right from the beginning, like that's when you start noticing some differences because you are not eager to just add plugins just because you have a couple of them. Like you don't need this amount of plugins, I promise. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell down below. Uh, feel free to join us in the Reaper Discord that Let's Talk About Reaper has made for everyone in the Reaper community. And I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Just feel free to tag me and I'll get to it once I'm in my computer or I get a notification because I enter Discord. Like just keep on working, keep on creating, and pay attention to these kind of things because this might speed up your process because you're not losing too much time in things that no one really cares. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks.